and talk to you a little bit about a seesaw. All right, can everybody see this top slide here? Yes, it looks great. We're good. Okay, so I do have a tiny URL up there um, that you might want to jot down or maybe we can throw it in the notes. Um, this is a presentation that I basically did at, at Tech Bootcamp that really took an hour and a half, if not more. So I'm not going to be going through all the slides, but I do want you to have them so um, at your leisure, you can go back and, then, and look at all the rest that's on there. Okay. Okay, so what is Seesaw? Seesaw is this great website for student engagement. I like to think of it as a, um, it's a place where kids can show what they know. Um, it's also a great student portfolio, and I'm going to show you some examples of how kids can collect assignments, not only from what their teachers pushed out through Seesaw, but also from other websites. Um, it's great because teachers can comment on it. If you so choose, kids can comment um, on each other's work. And then another option is parents can, if you invite them in, can look at their students' work and also comment as well. Um, that being said, the only way comments get through is through um, teacher approval. So you are in command of all of it. Now down here at the bottom of this slide, I have something in bold, and this is something I just learned last week. It's a, a new feature that Seesaw has put out, not a new feature, but you know, one of those clever people that says, hey, how about this? So with distance learning, uh, you know, we're trying to do more and more from home with less and less interaction with our kids. So this is the way of embedding a recording within your lessons. Okay. So uh, the plan for today is I want to give you a little intro. I'm going to let you try it as a student. I'm going to show you how to add the recordings, um, show you then some resources, and then if we have time, we'll get through creating your own. But I think that's something with the resources I'm going to give you, you could probably just explore on your own. Um, all righty, so here we go. So like I said, it's a way for all kids to show what they know. It's going to save you a lot of time because there's a lot of ready-made assignments that you could just grab, use as is, or tweak. The kids love um, what they can do because the tools are kind of fun. It's just not right an answer. This is going to be the activity library that I'm going to show you in a little bit. Um, and then basically what we do is teachers can find and create something to share with their kids. Kids can then take pictures or draw or record or more to then um, show what they know. And then, like I said, if you so choose, you can turn on this feature where families can then look in on their students' work and they'll get little notifications for that. So I'm going to show you a student example, and I did turn my audio on. So um, Delane, let me know if this sound is going to go through. I'm ready. OK, let's see. This is how I make Perfect. 7. 1 okay. plus 3 equals 7. 6 plus 1 equals 7. 5 plus 3 equals 7. Wait, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I need to cross out one of these. Okay, and five plus three does not equal seven, so five plus two equals seven. Okay, so with that, you can kind of see how the student had taken a picture of these base 10 blocks and then uploaded that picture to a seesaw canvas and then was able to write and then narrate his thought process through. Now here's an, an older student. Again, this is with a picture, but he has added in some um, text boxes with the text feature that he's gonna manipulate.
This is the circuit I built. The parts of my circuit are the switch, the battery, and the fan. When I first put my circuit together, it was not working. The problem was, up here, I realized that the positive and negative charges were in the opposite place. So I had to flip this piece around. And when I did that, it created a circuit that worked. It let the battery flow through to the fan. My next step is to make it lift off from the ground. I love that. How cute. Like a little hover something. Okay. Um, I think... I'm, I think you guys get the idea of what we're doing here. So I'm going to pass through these other examples um, just to kind of talk about what you can see, what the kids can do with this. They're reflecting, they're applying the vocabulary, they're problem solving, and then planning for the next steps. Okay, so this is kind of giving you an idea from the teacher's point of view. After they've given an assignment, you'll get this screen there where you can see all the students' work, and then you can comment directly on them before they're approved, send them back with giving them some suggestions for improvement or reject them totally and have them start over. Okay, a seesaw can be worked with, can be used with shared devices or one-to-one -one and even on, um, you know, students' phones. So it's free and it'll work on any device, so very, very versatile. And it's a very secure platform for the kids. They do give you an option of adding with Google Classroom. We have sent in our district privacy policy to have them update that. So I wouldn't suggest you roster your kids that way, but once we get the paperwork in hand, um, that would be a great way to roster your kids but they are compliant with FERPA, COPA, GDPR, and the rest. Okay, so now let's look at how kids are gonna use these tools. So when there is a template that's uploaded, the kids are gonna have access to these tools. Of course, we're gonna have the undo, redo. This creates a label, which is kind of fun because uh, kids can change the font and the color and get kind of creative with it. Uh, this is a microphone where they can record their thoughts and they have up to five minutes with that tool. Um, they can take photos if they have um, a camera. This is a fairly new option here where they can add shapes and backgrounds. And then caption is a, a shorter text piece that can either be uh, typed in or spoken. And then there are a number of annotation drawing tools here. There's a pencil, a pen, a highlighter, a glow pen, and an eraser. And then the kids can choose any of these colors. So you can imagine how exciting that can be for them. Wait a second, a glow pen? You have to describe what a glow pen is. Okay, glow pen is kind of like, um, I want to say it's kind of like a spray paint can. You know how you've kind of seen that? We'll play with it, okay? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of a smeary highlighter type thing. With rainbow colors as you go? Yes. yes, you can choose what you want. Yes. I know. How fun. All right. Um, and again, here's just another example of a first grade teacher. You send home your sight words. The kids are going to take a picture of it, and then they record them. So kids of all ages can use this. And I've seen high school uh, teachers use this with, like, their music students, have them record a piece um, that they're supposed to be practicing or learning. So the audio is really, really cool. I know I hate hearing my voice recorded, but for some reason the kids love it. Um, here's another one where you're taking the photo. Kids take a picture of something on their desk, 
and then they can draw on top of it explaining their understanding. And then this is um, the screen where the kids can choose how they want to upload their work. So again, with the camera, uh, drawing on it, video, again, five minutes. Uh, they can upload files from their computer or device, but it's gonna be limited to picture files or PDFs. So no Word documents, but they can upload anything from their Google Drive, you know, like a slide or um, a doc or a drawing. This notepad is kind of cool. It kind of pulls up a little sheet of paper type document and they can type on it. And then any kind of web link that they have, they can upload. So here's an example of a, um, like an autobiographical photo. Take a picture, throw in some descriptors, and then turn it in. move forward here okay I'm gonna pass through this one these are just all right so we are going to go in now and try it um, so I have created a class um, so open up a new tab on your Chrome browser and go to app.seesaw.me and if you just type in seesaw.me it's gonna go there anyway I'm gonna go get the code Okay, so when you get to, can you guys see this sign in screen? On your screen, yes. Okay, so everyone is going to open up Chrome and you're going to go to app.seesaw.me and at the next screen, you're going to say, I'm a student. And then this is the code that you're going to put in. Okay, so for those of you that might have an existing Seesaw account and you go to app.seesaw.me, it takes you straight to your teacher account. So if you're having yes. trouble finding it, I just want to point out in the upper left hand corner, you should see your name and there should be a gear icon. When you click on that gear icon down at the bottom of the menu, it'll say switch to student account. So here's where you can come in and attempt to uh, get signed into Cindy's class. Uh, there should be a plus join class button once you switch over to a student account. So just in case you're struggling with that. Oh, perfect. She has it up on the screen. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how we're doing here. They don't think we're in yet. So I can you go over again how to switch around in there? Sorry, I was trying to get my camera. <laughs> I sure. didn't hear what you, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, he wants to see how, as an adult, if you already have an existing teacher account, how do you get to be a student to type in the code? Okay. Um, here. So in the upper left corner. Mm -hmm. Am I on? How come I'm not getting that other option? Oh, that, that is interesting. I feel like it used no, to be there. Has a, yeah, <laughs> mine has a switch to student account at the very bottom when and I mine, click on my name. And mine doesn't have it. Now, why is that? Ooh. Isn't that odd? It's intriguing. Yes. <laughs> it knows that you're presenting. That's why. <laughs> That's why. Let's mess her up. I know. I feel like um, I used to have that. Another, another comment says, I just had to sign out. So make sure that if you have a teacher account, you can fully sign out of your teacher account. And then you should be able to um, pop in, in as, as a student. student. So yeah, maybe just sign out. Yes. Thank you for I that don't tip. Want to sign out mm -hmm. here. 
Okay, no. <laughs> okay. I feel like I'm not getting anybody joining over here. You have, uh, I think, three of us so far. I wonder why I'm not seeing names here. Let's see names. You manage. Oh, here we go. Okay, do we need to wait for anybody else to join? Well, I have the code in the chat. So if they okay. are still um, yeah, running through it, then they can catch up. So I can open right. up that group chat or I can repost it if you need it. Okay. All right. So you see my teacher screen here and I have journal and I have activities and I have inbox and I also have skills. I don't think you guys have that. You just have these three choices. So the journal is the place where a student is going to, all of their assignments are going to be collected there. So this is kind of like their um, portfolio. New activities that teachers have pushed out, they will need to click over here on activities. So let's have you guys go over to activities if you haven't yet. And you will see over here any assignments that I have posted. So you'll see a little thumbnail of the picture, the directions over here, and this big green add response button. And I always instruct the students, make sure you read the instructions first, like it's a broken record, right? So it says, click on the add response to start the activity. Use at least two tools to solve the puzzle. Click on the green check to turn in your activity. So one of the things that you have as a teacher to model this is, I have the kids say, okay, let's click on add and response, is you have this sample student option, which then I can go through and show them how I want them to do the assignment. Now, if they've forgotten the instructions, if they click up here, it pops up again, they can read the instructions. So that's a nice little tool for them to have. So here is then the full assignment on the canvas. So this is the text tool, the microphone tool, to take the picture. This is where you're going to see then the shapes in the background. Whoops. This is the caption tool. And then down here at the bottom, you're going to see those drawing tools. Now over here on the right hand side, you can see that there is just this one page. If I had several other pages or say a slide presentation, they would all be stacked over here and the kids can then uh, click on them from page to page. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So at this point, uh, this is an activity that I got from Mashup Math. I love these guys. Um, they'll send out like a daily email with these little free activities. They're great warm-ups for your math class. Um, so I'm going to have you guys go through and see if you can't solve this. Basically what you want to do is you want to find out what, uh, these are just variables, is what is a piece of bread? the value of it, the cheese, the pan, the ketchup, and so on and so forth. So I would, I usually just use the pencil tool first and I would come over here and I would say, okay, um, I can't start at the top because I don't know what any of those are. I know that 35 divided by something is going to be seven. So that ketchup is going to be five. Now what you do, if, if you run out of time, you can click draft and it, it'll go back to your journal. And then I can always go back in and work on it again. The other thing that I can do is down here, we've got these three little dots and I can say edit the item and I can go back in and I can work on it. This little green check mark is used when you are done and you're ready to turn it in. So I'm going to let you guys work on that a little bit. Just experiment with the tools. The text box is kind of fun because you can click on these different colors.
And I'm going to give you guys just about 30 seconds more, just so you can pl you don't have to really solve it. Just play with the tools. Okay, let's have everybody click on that green check mark so that then you can see on the teacher's end what it looks like when kids are turning in an assignment. So I can see here I have six unapproved posts. And when I click on this, then I can look at the student. I can approve them all. I can approve each one. I can delete them. Or I can just approve them all. So while we're on this screen, I want to show you some of the settings that you can have. Up here in the upper right hand corner of the class, there's a wrench. When I click on the wrench, I can see first the class settings. This is where I can change the name of the class, the grade level. This is a really nice piece here um, for co teachers. Um, I know, like, when I am showing this to the teachers I work with, I create the class and then I invite them in, and we both have the same editing rights and assigning rights. Um, if you work with an RSP teacher or a speech teacher, you can add them here as well. Uh, this is kind of fun where you can then change the theme if you like, the class icon if you like. It's always about all the sparkle and the color and the glitter. Yes. Now down here on the student section, this is kind of the tricky part. So. You can have kids join with a QR code. You can have kids join with just a letter code like we had. With both of those, students will only have access at school. If you want students to be able to use Seesaw at home and continue an assignment, they have to sign in with their district email account. So that's the, you know, the at CUSD student account. So that makes it a little bit harder for the little guys but um, it just gives you a little bit, it gives you more options. Now over here on the Matted Students, this is where I can see the list of kids and where I could delete students or add students if I needed. Um, this is something that you know, teachers have mixed feelings about. You can have students see their peers work and they can like it and not like it. Some teacher, not not like it, they can only like it. Um, you can have them make comments. So again, some teachers like that, some teachers don't. Um, I, that's usually something that I don't turn on at first and then we'll practice a little bit and it is something that you can toggle off and on. And then I always like this where I have to look at it first before it gets posted just to alleviate any inappropriate comments. Um, this is a new feature that they've had since we've gone to distance learning. It's a home learning student code. Um, that kind of bypasses that need to have a Gmail account. Um, and you would have to print these off and then send them home with your families um, so that students could create an account at home and then have access from home without the G Gmail. And then this is where you can enable these pieces. Now over here, it says enable item editing. I always leave this on because I want students to be able to correct any errors that they find after they submit it. Now, if you wanted to um, assign something that was maybe an assessment that you didn't want them going back and changing, you could shut that off. This is a piece that I'm barely gonna touch on, um, but it's enabling family access. You can have up to 10 family members that can look in on their own child's work and make comments. Those comments, again, come to you first before anything is posted. 
This is another new feature. I have not played with it, this yet, enabling a blog, but I think that could have some fun possibilities. Folders um, and skills are part of the premium package, which I don't have and so I don't use. And those are about the basic settings that I wanted to go over with you. Okay, I'm gonna stop here for a second and see if anyone has any questions about what we've done so far. No, nothing in the chat. Um, I did notice that as a student, I can see the little folder icon. Um, so have you found that students are confused by that little folder icon? I don't, you know, maybe that's a new thing that they have enabled for the kids since I've used this. It could be a way for them to organize their work within. Right. And so from the teacher point of view, um, you can create those folders so you can have an English folder, a math folder, a science folder, an art folder. Uh, but as a student, when I click on that folder, it says I have no folders. So have students asked you if they are capable of making folders? It doesn't look like I can as a student. I have not seen that. And like I said, uh, that may be something new. I tried it. They have an updated web um, webinar every week that you can sit in and they'll tell you about the latest, greatest things that are in. And I just, I don't keep up on all of them. So that could be. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> It could be a new thing. I think it's fabulous for organization because I know I tend to throw everything in one place and then I look at it and it makes me crazy and then I go back and reorder it. So that's something that I need to explore and I'll add. Okay, so we do have three questions for you. Okay. Um, let's go a little bit out of order from the chat. Are kids able to access Seesaw through Clever? Yes, yes. There is a Seesaw link in Clever. It's not a single sign-on. They will have to log in with, they'll have to click on that, you know, join with Gmail account, but it is a direct link. Yes. Perfect. And then what does it look like when, as a teacher, you approve an assignment? Okay. So if I, I'm going to go, I'm going to show you a little different way. So if I go into activities and I were to look at this assignment, do you see how it says six responses? If I click on review, I'm gonna see the activity and I can see all of my students here. So I can click on Tony's, see what he did. I can leave a comment for him, like, you rocked it. Okay, and post it, and he will get that message. I can like it. See, some of these are new. What's this one? Oh, private note. Okay. Um, and then I can approve it. And then I can move on to the next student. So I can go to the next post. And that one hasn't happened one yet. These are all my fake ones. Betty Rubble, Bam Bam. Okay. So then the next one. So I can send it back if I'm like, eh, you're not quite right. I can send it back. I can delete them and make them start over again or approve them right out. Does that help? Oh, you did the glow pen. <laughs> I had to. I had to show the demo of the glow pen. <laughs> Isn't it fun? Absolutely. The kids go crazy for it. I see a lot of glow pen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so does that help with that question? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think okay. that all of the features from the teacher side, kids have such a great time with Seesaw, but the power that we have from the teacher perspective is just as awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Any other questions before I go on to how to assign? Um, I was able to answer the third one by uh, chat, so okay. I think we're ready to see more. We're good. All right. So now I'm going to show you how to add a lesson from a teacher point of view. So up here I have this add button. I'm going to click add and I'm going to say assign activity. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the easy peasy one. So right here, it's going to default to my library. These are going to be lessons that I've created, I've borrowed. Um, but if I go over here to community, this is where all of those wonderful general creative people will store things. So let's say I was looking for a third grade assignment on 
history. I can also search by, I don't know, what third grade's not going to do Revolutionary War. Let's find something else here. Let's just, oh, let's try Gold Rush. Let's see what we can find on Gold Rush. My two favorite subjects. Fourth Yay. grade Gold Rush, fifth grade Revolutionary so War. <laughs> Here are assignments that some teachers have put in, and I don't know, some of these don't seem to match. So if I were to go to Gold Rush Migration and I click on this, I can preview this lesson, and it says tap draw, use different colors to draw the roots. Oh, I like this. Okay. So I can click, and it looks like I've already uh, liked this. When I click like, it's going to add it to my collection. Okay, if I want to assign it right out and I'm going to go, I love it, I'm just going to click on assign and then I can assign it right to my class. And bam, they're going to get it. Okay, so if I were to go back to my library, I must have it in one of these other collections. Well, I'm just going to show you how to. Why do I not find it? Because I've got too many things in here. I'm just going to show you how to edit something. Oh, I don't want that one. Let's say I want to edit this one. I can come down here and our wonderful little three dots, you know, help us find new things to do. I'm going to click edit activity. I can come in here and I can change the directions. I can add voice instructions and I can add more templates to it. So anything you grab that you like, you can always edit it and make it your own. Okay. So oh that my gosh. I saw a really cool feature at the bottom when you were trying to make it your own. So I have students that struggle to read a little bit. Did I see something that I could read the instructions to my students? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. So you can click on this and then you can read it out loud to them. Yes. You have up to five minutes anytime there's a recording. And this is a feature. Feature. Yeah, this is a, yeah, this is a feature that's really nice, especially for your little. Okay, so that's how to grab an assignment straight from the library. Now, let's say I wanted to create my own. I'm going to click Add, Assign, Activity, but I want to grab something that I have on my computer. So I'm going to say Create New Activity. And I'm going to call this guacamole day. Now you're talking. I'm not talking. And I'm just doing this because I want to grab one more of those little math mashups. I'm kind of fixated on those. Okay, so I'm going to add a template and I'm going to upload it from my computer. So as you can see here, I have the choice of selecting from my computer or anything that I have in Google Drive. But I'm going to go grab that math mashup. Where is Guacamole Day? Let's do this one. So there it is. And then I'm going to go over here to this green check mark. And now it is in there ready to go. Now, if I wanted to add anything in here, I could put I could put directions. I could put some of those little text boxes if I wanted them to move around. But if I'm good with just here you go, you use the tools. There it is. So now I need to type my instructions. So I'm going to say um, first click whoops, on the add response. Now I can just write it out. But one of the things that Seesaw does just to kind of make it a little cuter is they have these little Seesaw icons. And I always have this shortcut icon tab open because you can see here these are the little shortcut codes so that in your directions the icons show up. So the add is going to be colon add colon. Click on the add button to 
start. And then you can continue adding it. Okay? So when I say save, now the assignment looks like this. Now, sometimes what happens is I get started and I need to do something else and come back to it. This is not done. I can always come back here to those three dots. I can say edit the activity and I'm back in there again. Again, I can add those voice directions. I can add a multimedia instruction or this is where like if I wanted to add a, a video for them to watch, I could add them, that in there and then save. Okay, does that make sense for that? Any questions? Yes. Okay. Um, a quick side question. Okay. Is math mashup for all grades? Um, I would, you know, and I put the link down at the bottom in my resources. Um, I would say it's probably more geared first through maybe eight. Okay. Yeah. And, then and he has a great another, YouTube channel too that explains math processes too. And I also put that in the resources. Oh, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, at the end, we'll have to show everybody the link for your resource again. Okay. So another question is, yep. how do you get to the point to show the icon? How do I get the point to add the icon? Yeah, in the instructions. How do I get this to show up? Um, I'm waiting for the chat to, yes. How do you get this picture in the instructions? Okay. So I'm going, let's go back to edit. So let's, so do you see how I said colon, add colon? This is the code for add response. So if I were to look at my shortcut bar, let's say I wanted this time, I wanted them to use the glow pen to answer it. So do you see how it's colon, glow pen, colon? Over here, I would say, use the colon, glow pen to show your answer. So now when I say save, it's gonna show up the, the glow pen. That's really neat. I dropped in the link for the page that Cindy's using to get those words, those shortcut words between the colon. So if you check out the chat, it's a kind it's of a long the, link. Yeah. It's also, I have put it in my presentation as well. Oh, thank you for that. Um, you so bet. I just did a Google search for Seesaw Icon Shortcuts. So if you forget to grab this link, uh, we'll have Cindy's presentation, but if all else fails, Google can help out for sure. <laughs> for sure. And that, that website gets updated all the time because, like, I was just in there the other day, and there's new ones again. They're, this is a very dynamic young company, and they're just they're always updating new fun things to make it bigger and better and more fun. All right. Are we ready to move on to the, the latest thing that I learned? It's a little crazy, but I love it. Ooh, more sparkles, yes. More sparkles. Okay. So, are you back in my presentation now? Yes. All right. Okay, so we talked about that. Okay, I'm going to jump out of here again, and I'm going to go back to see stuff. Okay. So, um, one of the things that I think kids are needing more as we are doing this distance learning is they're needing... Well, they need more instruction because it's, it's hard to do it on their own. And I think the parents are tired at this point. So um, what I'm going to show you how to do is to assign an assignment with a, a slide presentation. So I'm going to say create new activity, and I'm going to call this rounding, rounding whole numbers. All right. And I'm going to Start off my directions, click on add to start, and then I'm going to tell them to um, listen to the lesson on, I think I'm going to make it slide three. 
All right, so I'm going to come down here to where it says add template for student responses. And what I did earlier, and I put the directions for doing this down in my resources, is I went to iReady, and they have those slide presentations for their lessons. And if, yeah, I'm not going to have time to go through all that. Um, I downloaded the PowerPoint, and then I had to convert it to a Google slide because that's the only thing that's going to work with Seesaw. So I'm going to upload that slide that I previously saved that's going to be in my Google Drive. Now, while we're waiting for Google to show her her files, um, if you are unsure about how to get those ready slide decks, contact your friendly local TOSA and your tech coach. We are more than happy to help you find those particular slide decks. Um, or if you need help converting a PowerPoint to a Google slide, contact your local tech coach. And I, I did that too. I did a screencast of why it's in there. I started with the slide. I mean, with the iReady page, and then downloaded it, and then so it's a, it's a few minutes, but it is there. All That's right, so, so thoughtful. So here I am. You can see right here. This is the PowerPoint, and we've got the P, and this is the converted slide. So I'm going to choose this, and that's what I'm attaching to this activity. And you can see here are the different pages. So if I click on this one, I can see there's page two, page three, and so forth. Now, mm. if I want to um, delete some of these, I can't. Like, let's say I don't want this. I can delete it. I'm going to click right here on the three dots, and I'm going to delete that page. Yes, I don't want that. So now I have just six pages, 11 pages. Oh, my gosh. Too many. So I think I'm going to keep this because it explains it. And if I come over here to the third page, this is where I would like to show my kids how to do this and give them a little instruction. So while I'm in here on this slide, I'm going to come over here to the microphone. I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to start recording. And this is where I'm going to tell the kids what I want them to do. So I'm going to say Smallville has 12,558 people registered to vote to the nearest thousand. How many people are registered to vote? Show your work. Okay, so boys and girls, the tools I want you to use are the recording button because I want to hear your thought process. And then you choose whether you want to use the pen or the pencil. But I want to see your thought process. I'm going to start with the pen and I'm going to see that I need to use 12,558, and I'm supposed to round to the nearest thousand. So blah, 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 I'm gonna be explaining this, what I want my students to do. When I'm done recording, you can see I have five minutes, I'm gonna click done. Now I can listen to myself, and if I like it, I'm gonna click the check mark. Now it takes a little while for it to render and process the audio, so, um, Give it a chance. You're gonna to have to wait for that green check mark to pop up. If I want to re-record, which I usually do because the first time sounds terrible, um, I can re-record here. When I'm done and I'm happy with it, I'm gonna click this check mark. And now it's gonna put that instructional video within the presentation for my students. So as they're going through the lesson, they're going to go to slide one, they can read it. They're going to go to slide two, they're going to read it, listen to the slide, and I can put in the rest of my, my directions here. When I click save, it's all packaged. Now I can assign it. And now it should pop up in your activities. And you may have to refresh your page in order to see this lesson. 
I just went from journal to activities yep. and it showed up. So it's a simple one click. If you're already in activities as the student, click over to journal, click back to activities. It showed up when under two seconds. So it's very Excellent. fast. Excellent. No one's hogging the bandwidth at your house. Nice. Okay, any questions about that? It's, like I said, I put a video from the beginning of, you know, how to go to iReady, how to find the slide, how to download it, how to convert it, and such. Oh, and we'll definitely it. need to get that link back up. So yeah. the first question that kind of pops into my head is, I work with my grade level team. We are a really tight knit group. And how do we simplify this? So if I'm looking at rounding whole numbers, I want to share this with all of my colleagues so they don't have to do it from scratch. How can I share this activity with my PLC? Love it. Okay. So if I go back to add and I go to assign activity and I am in my library, let's say I wanted to share this with you. I can come up here to my three dots and I can say share activity. And now I can, if you have groups, if you have a seesaw, if you have a school account, you could put it in here. But if I just say select teachers, here's the teachers that I have um, shared classes with. Or I could just say, oops. Spell your name right. Are you with a T or not? No, I am missing the T. Okay. <laughs> we'll give you the T. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm just going to send it to you. And now it is shared. That is incredible. So if you think about all of these math lessons that we have access to or benchmark lessons that we have access to, we could really share the work across a grade level and um, just make things much more efficient. So, oh, such Absolutely. a great tip. Absolutely. Okay. Are you ready to move on? I think so. Okay. So the next thing that I wanted to show you that has been a game changer is this um, Seesaw extension. Um, should I go through how to get to the web store and do that? Definitely. Okay. So go over here to your colored waffle. And you're going to see web store over here. And you're going to type in Seesaw. And you're going to see this Reflect in Seesaw extension. Now, I already have it, so I have this. Um, but yours would say install. And what that does is it puts this extension on your Chrome taskbar. And this is something you'll want your students to do as well. And I'm going to show you why. Um, on my presentation, let's get down here. I have put a number of resources that are great for students to use, for you to use for lessons. This one right here is called Free Math Apps. Let me get out of this again. And it looks like this. They have a clock, they have number frames, number pieces, fractions. I love the geo board. So let's say we were doing area. I'm going to put this link in my seesaw lesson and i'm going to tell my students that i'm going to i'm going to choose open the web app that i want them to create a um figure and 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 um tell me what the area is or the perimeter let's go with perimeter and i'm going to choose this larger board you just are going to grab these little rubber bands and I'm going to, let's choose another color. Grab, whoops. Uh, 
while she's decorating. One of the uh, tips for using GeoBoard with the Math Learning Center is these rubber bands are very interactive. Students sometimes get stuck on how to stretch the rubber bands. So as you watch her placing the rubber bands, to stretch them out, you have to click on a peg to peg, but to stretch the rubber band itself, you have to grab it from the middle. So grabbing it by the ends, means that you're trying to hook it on a new peg, grabbing it by the middle will give it a different shape. So just a heads up on that one if students get a little stuck. Okay, so it has some other tools here. Probably the easiest is the squiggle, um, and they can choose the color that they would like. Oops, so I'm gonna count this up. I know that this one is going to be, oops, two, one, two, three, four, Another tool down here is they can then write the equation. Oh, go away, pop-ups. And I could say, well, two, excuse me, four plus, let's get rid of that one. Plus two plus two equals 12, I can do that. All right, so these are kind of cute little tools, but let's say I wanted the kids then to turn this into me. I'm gonna come up here to my Seesaw extension. I'm gonna click. I can choose the area or the entire screen. When I click on that, bam, it's going to put it right into my Seesaw canvas. Then that I can annotate and turn in. And they can do this on any website. Now, would you recommend, instead of using the tools inside of the GeoBoard, is it easier for students to use the tools inside of Seesaw to show their perimeter math work? Either or, either or. Student preference then. <laughs> Student preference, and I just, you know, I'm of the ilk that I like to show kids a little bit and then I let them loose. And then I'll say, tell me what you learned. Because more times than not, they're gonna show me something I didn't know. And so right. I like to have that opportunity for them to explore and them to show off what they learned and then for me to learn something new. Oh my goodness. Well, we have just about five more minutes. I uh, would love to see any questions that you have in chat so we can get those answered for you. So go ahead and pop in those questions while she continues to drop more amazing tips for us. Okay, so um, as we go through the, the presentation, these are some of the resources. This guy, Coach Ben, is a kindergarten teacher in the Bay Area. He is amazing. And uh, this is his website where he has tons of tutorials. He, this is where I learned how to do the recording feature within the lesson in Seesaw. And even though he's a kindergarten teacher, uh, he does extremely sophisticated things. And you can adapt what he does to any of your lessons. For those of you that have never played with Voki, um, you can make a talking avatar. These are really cute that kids can then upload. I use this to make kids write. I say you have to get this paragraph done, this page done, then they get to create the avatar that is then speaking what they wrote, a fun thing that you can put in Seesaw. Um, this is the video that I said to convert PowerPoint to slides, and it does go through um, using the iReady ready-made sites. These are just some more math resources. Um, this is that math mashup where you can get those little activities, and then this is his YouTube channel where he has a number of lessons explaining mathematical concepts. Okay, within Seesaw, there are tons and tons of support. And again, they update it all the time. They have some printables. They have a regular PD in your pajamas. Here's the link for the icon shortcuts, how to use their help center. They have categories, they've created a ticket, they have a little bot that pops up. These guys are amazing. I emailed them the other day about the um, learning the student help codes. And I mean, within five minutes, they got back to me. 
So they're super, super helpful and easy to get answers. Okay, a couple other things are um, they do have that family feature where you, uh, parents can look in, or 10 people actually from the family can look in at their students' work. And they also have a translation feature where you can send notes home and it converts it to like 55 different languages. And the same thing, if parents want to type back to you in a language, it'll convert back to you. Magic. So helpful. <laughs> yeah. And then this is just another feature with announcements and messaging that you can send home through that inbox feature. Okay. So that's it. And now this last part was just then if you wanted to go in and play. But as usual, I talk too much. So <laughs> no. any questions? Yes. Um, are there any reports that you can take a look at as a teacher or basic assessment tools like a multiple choice that can be embedded into a seesaw activity? Ooh, like a quiz. Hmm. You know, I guess if you were to put a link within it, you could. Um, but within itself, uh, not that I'm aware of. I think it's now, here's the only other thing I wanted to show you. I don't want to post. Well, let's just post it. I did see a little feature in here. Let's get back. Oh, I'm just looping around here. Okay. So when you have uh, the upgraded version, there are uh, skills. It's, you can see that on Cindy's screen right now on the far right hand side. So there are reports for skills, but that's with the upgraded version. Right. You're right. And so you can see the little picture there that there's definitely a way to get that for skills. Now, one of the things that you can do is they have something called um, ambassador training. And if you were to come up here and you were to explore this gear icon, um, they do have um, a training that you can do. It's pretty comprehensive, but you get to learn Seesaw inside, outside, upside down. Um, and it's free and you go at your own pace and they have little spot checks, you know, that you can kind of test your knowledge. Um, so if it's something that you would like to learn more about, I would highly suggest it. It's and deep tip. If you go through the ambassador training, you get an upgraded version for free. Yeah. You get all the skills and all the other stuff. And like I said, it's, it's fabulous. Well, thank you, Cindy, so much for sharing the power of Seesaw for student engagement. Um, I want to honor everyone's time. We are amazingly at 1030 already. And so if you have any additional questions, um, <laughs> the question was free forever as an ambassador. You have to maintain your ambassador status. So yes. <laughs> yes. Every year you'll renew it and they have you do like a little shorter, a little renew um, course, but it's, it's nothing. It's, it's pretty quick. It was about two hours to become an ambassador and maybe an hour every year to maintain right. that status. But perfect. Then, Here is the link to her resource with the videos. It's very thoughtful and thorough. I highly recommend grabbing that tiny URL and go through. Uh, Cindy, you said you posted how-to videos for grabbing a PowerPoint from Ready. Um, yes. So, yes. Yes. She's got so much amazing awesomeness. Um, inside this particular presentation.